All right. That's Facebook. Get my Insta going. All right. <clears throat> well, welcome to the weekly live prophetic word. Uh, right now I'm broadcasting live on both uh, Facebook and Insta. And then when I get through, um, although I guess I could set up a YouTube stream to go live now too. Uh, I'll have to do that at some point. But anyway, when I get through, uh, the video will be uploaded to YouTube uh, about 30 minutes after I get through uh, with this. So I hope you guys are having a good Sunday. Uh, I know I'm going to have to say this many times, so I'll just say it uh, now at the top of the hour but uh, or at the top of the broadcast. But um, this will be uh, my last broadcast for a, a few weeks. I'm going on a summer break after this, and I won't be back until after Labor Day weekend. So that'll be the 12th. So that's actually uh, three Sundays. So after today, I'll be gone <clears throat> 22, August 22, 29. And I'll let you move out of the way. August 22, 29, and September 5th, which is Labor Day weekend. So I won't, won't be back on until the 12th. So that's three Sundays. So today, uh, last one for August, I'll be gone August 22nd, August 29th. And September 5th, which is Labor Day weekend. And so I'll be back live on September 12th. Because it's definitely time for uh, summer break. Because uh, this has been a, uh, a long, uh, long uh, summer and a lot happening. Hold on. My sister is asking me to send her my stream. So let me get that. So she can watch it live while I'm doing it. And uh, you hear me say it all the time. I just, I just praise God for my sisters. Send her my stream. So let me get there. I am. You hear me say it all the time. I just, I just there. I see. I'm, I'm echoing. Right. Okay. So. So uh, uh, praise God for my sisters because they love and support me. And uh, oh, there's Prophet Sheila. So good to see you, Prophet Sheila. Thank you for stopping by. Prophet is uh, just praise God for. Oh Lord, <clears throat> my voice sounded kind of froggy, but <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. So you know part of ministering uh, is knowing when to take breaks and you have to take a break. You know, you uh, sometimes people uh, burn themselves out trying to minister year round and whatnot. And that's always a mistake. So, so this will be break time for me. So, if you haven't heard me say it lately, uh, I'm just glad to be in God's service. <laughs> I know we have a song uh, like that, and I know that might sound cliche, but it's true. I mean it. It's very real for me. I'm just glad to be in the service of the Lord because things could be so different. And you know, it's just the mercy and the grace of God. And we are always amazed by that because the name of the song is not mediocre grace. The name of the song is not Sometimey grace, the name of the song is Amazing Grace. But what amazes us the most about God <clears throat> is that he does what he does because of his goodness and not ours. Once Adam sinned and became self-conscious and grew a conscience, that we became completely self-centered creatures. Before Adam sinned, we were not self-conscious and we were connected to God and we were one with him and we were innocent like he is and we were pure like he is. But once Adam sinned and we separated from God, we became self-conscious. And so one of the things that amazes us the most about God is how he deals with us. And it's just like the scripture says, he has not dealt with, dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us after our iniquities. 
okay? But uh, he's shown us unbelievable mercy and grace and favor because God does what he does because he's good, because he's good, not based on our goodness. If God was waiting on us to be good, then we'd never have anything. And sometimes that that very concept is just mind blowing because it's always based on his goodness and not based on ours. Okay, all right, 2.30, so we're gonna jump on in. <clears throat> And we're going to release the word of the Lord for this Sunday, August 15th, 2021. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for yet another chance to hear from you. Thank you, O God, for the three levels of word. Thank you, O God, for the Bible. Thank you for Jesus, the living word. And thank you for the rhema, the prophetic word, O God. We need your word, O God, to live. We can't live apart from your word. So, Lord, I, I must decrease so you can increase. So I take on my cross right now, surrender myself, my body, a living sacrifice. And I ask you to breathe through me. Oh God, that every word spoken is what you want, that what is said is what you want said, that you might receive the glory in all things, that sinners might be mortified, that they would not want to live. They might be cut to the heart like Peter on the day of Pentecost. It would be cut to the heart and say, what must we do to be saved? That demons would be terrified uh, as their kingdom begins to be torn down by the mighty anointed word of God, okay? And that the saints would be edified, that your body would be built up by what it is you have to say through the Holy Ghost. Thank you for and believe you for it. And I declare and decree that signs and wonders and miracles shall follow this word and all that receive it. And we're looking for you to do, our expectation is for you to do great things. In Jesus' name we pray and believe, amen. All right, amen and amen. Today's weekly live prophetic word is, whoops, that's the wrong link. It is, I'm gonna have to retype it. Enter into his joy. Enter into his joy. Now, let me put that on the screen. Have you ever run a marathon? Have you ever run anything? Sprints, because I used to sprint uh, a lot. I never really was one for distance running when I was young, but I did more dashes, 50-yard dashes, 100-yard dashes. I was better at stuff like that. Have you ever run anything? Have you ever run any type of distance? Sprints, you know, relay races were always fun. Um, but relay races meant that everybody had to do their parts. <laughs> but have you ever run anything? Okay, if you've ever run anything, you know this one thing, that it's about getting to the finish line. Because everybody starts well, everybody starts really hot out the gate. You know, everybody has that explosion when the gun goes off or they say on your mark, get set, go when you take off and everything about that takeoff is fire, man. It's just fire. You just launch out there and you're propelling forward, all that different kind of stuff. But So depending on what kind of race you do, like if you did hurdles, I was never really any good at hurdles. I wasn't really too concerned about that. But if you notice when they finish the race, most runners lean. They lean in so they can win and hit the tape, even if it's a tenth of a second ahead of their competitor. But you, if you know anything about running or if you've ever run anything, sprints, hurdles, relays, or marathons, I've never run a marathon. And after seeing what it does to your body, I'm not sure I want to. <laughs> Because Lord have mercy, you get dehydrated and then your muscles go not up. I felt my muscles not before and that's not a fun feeling. That's why the Red Cross sets up triage centers along the path of Chicago marathons because you're going to get dehydrated. But the point of running anything, whatever your thing is, sprints, hurdles, relay races, marathons, dashes, the point is finishing. <laughs> Because there's so much energy at the beginning. There's so many, you know, everybody's warming up. Everybody's jumping around. Everybody's, you know, doing the neck shake, you know, doing the finger thing, getting all loose and everything. That's when you start. <laughs> but the point <laughs> of running the race is finishing. It's hitting the tape. It's concluding even after all the pressure on your chest and after knotting of your muscles and whatever your knees and your back and your ankles do. And if you have the right shoes for your feet to support your weight, and if you're lean like you need to be, and if you learn how to pace yourself and you learn how to preserve your energy and all those different kinds of things, let me wave it, Fred, what up, Fred? 
even if you do all those things, all those things ultimately don't do you any good. If you don't finish, you got to finish the race. Well, today's prophetic word is about what happens when we do. Now, let me hasten to say, I'm still in my intro, let me hasten to say in the intro that this whole idea that everything in our lives as Christians only happens when we get to heaven is ridiculous. <laughs> and that's why I do my No More Genies broadcast. And that's why I'm adamant that we're going to stick with what the word says. And we're not going to listen to Christian myth. And we're not going to listen to Christian tradition or denominationalism. We're going to listen to what the word says. That's why God makes prophets. It's our job to say what thus saith the Lord. And what a lot of people don't understand is that Jesus won back for us everything that Adam lost, but Jesus won back for us both time and our lives on this earth and eternity. Not we don't get anything or nothing happens or whatever until we get to eternity. Is that the way the Lord lived his life? Would you just think about that for a minute? <laughs> Is that the way the Lord lived his life? Okay. Is that the way King David lived his life? All of the promises that God made the Hebrews, uh, let me get my mic a little bit closer. All the promises that God made the Hebrews in Deuteronomy chapter 28, because, you know, we love to quote Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. That's the one that says, you know, we'll be above only and not beneath. We'll be the head and not the tail. Funny how we don't quote the whole passage, which says you must listen to everything God is saying and observe to do all his commandments. But anyway, I don't have time to, to talk about that. So, but we love to quote that all the time that, you know, we're the head not to tell, above only not beneath. I want you to notice in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, every promise in those verses is physical. One more time. Every promise in those verses is physical. The Lord will bless your basket in your store. The Lord will bless your coming in and your going out. Uh, the Lord will bless uh, your the seed of your body, the fruit of your body, the fruit of your cattle, uh, the flocks of sheep, your kind, uh, which is, uh, again, more cattle. Uh, the Lord will make your enemies that rise up against you be defeated before your face. They'll come out against you one way, flee from before you seven ways. OK, all that's physical and all that's right now. So unfortunately, what happened in the development of Christianity over the years since the time of Jesus is there was a push. And some of it might be rooted in Gnosticism. Some of it might be rooted in the idea that things that are physical are bad, which is ridiculous because God gave us both the physical and the spiritual. But somewhere along the way, we got this idea in our heads that it's all about going to the great by and by to some pie in the sky when you die. And that's not, <laughs> that's not what the Lord says. Everything with God is right now. So when Jesus came and lived his life and died, resurrected and ascended, he won back for us everything Adam lost in this life and gave us the power to overcome the devil and overcome the flesh and overcome the sin curse and gained us entrance into the next life, into the eternal realm, because the realm of earth now is the temporal realm. In other words, things are born here, they live and they die and time moves on. So time is present here in the eternal realm, which is where father and son live. Uh, that's what Jesus wants us rights to get into so that we can live forever. But we have eternal life right now. OK, you already if you're saved, you're already born again. You're already living forever right now. One day your spirit is going to step out of your body and your body is going to go back to the dust. That's because of the sin curse of Adam, because of sin. But you are still alive. So you go on up to the eternal realm into judgment. Oh, I still got my gloves on. Into judgment, into your eternal place in God's kingdom, whatever that's going to be based on how you obey God in this life. So I just want to make that clear before we go into today's lesson so you don't get that erroneous idea <clears throat> that I probably has, some, I believe probably has some root in what I call colonizer Christianity to where they said, we'll take all your substance and we'll take all your resources and we'll take the land and we're going to pat you on the head and say, you be a good Christian and suffer. And then when you die, God will reward you for your suffering. That's not Lord have mercy. That's not what the Bible teaches. Some of that is not necessarily incorrect, but is woefully incomplete. So that's the intro to help you understand 
that you're supposed to have rewards and completion and joy in this life. The same way when you finish any type of degree, when you go through junior high school, you graduate. When you go through high school, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, at some point you got to graduate. If you have a, go to a two year school, a tech school, if you get an associate's degree, if you go to a university, if you go to a four year university, if you get a master's or a PhD, the point of taking all those classes is not just, you know, for, for giggles, to take the classes, the point is to graduate and obtain the degree. Okay, it's just like that in the kingdom of God. The reason that's so important is so you don't get discouraged. Lord have mercy, what if you're 19 years old and somebody told you all your blessings are going to come after you die and you live a long life? You got to live all them years before you get any kind of reward from God? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And so with all that in mind, we're going to look at today's scripture. Uh, and then, as always, we're going to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now, you hear me say that all the time, and I'll briefly explain it here. The Holy Ghost is the author of the Bible. The Spirit of God breathed on different authors to physically write it, but he is actually the author of scriptures. And the Holy Ghost is the only one that knows the Father and the Son. Just like your spirit in you, you're the only one that really knows you. I mean, obviously, God knows you, but I mean... There's stuff inside you that don't nobody know but you. Well, that's because it's in your spirit, your vessel. Well, that's the analogy. That's the idea with the Holy Spirit of God, that the Holy Ghost understands Father and Son like nobody else. Nobody knows the Father and Son but the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost breathed on certain authors to write the scriptures. Okay. With that being the case, the Lord said we need to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So we don't just read what the Bible says, we ask the Holy Ghost, how, what did you mean by what you said? And how does that apply to us now? What are you saying to us now through scriptures that were written then? That's what people that don't walk in the prophetic don't understand. When you read the scriptures, you have to invoke the author of the scriptures, which is the Holy Ghost, and ask him, number one, what did you mean by what you said in the scriptures then? But number two, how does that apply to my life now? So that's why I don't listen to people that say that the Bible is old or ancient or archaic or irrelevant, all that, because none of that's true. You just don't know the Holy Ghost. So having said that, we're going to go to our foundational scripture for today, which is <clears throat> Matthew 25 and 23. I'm actually going to read the whole passage, but I'm going to read this scripture first. Matthew 25 and 23 says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. That's the King James Version. So I've got to read that little section in there so you understand what's going on. So now I'm going to read, Matthew 25, verses 14 through 23, to give you context. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of these servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Okay, a lot to unpack there. You may think you're familiar 
with that passage of scripture, but the spirit of God is going to show us some stuff that I guarantee you haven't seen before. Okay. First thing you want to notice in verse 14, the Lord said, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. This parable is about money. <laughs> it's about goods. Now we have taken it and we have said that sometimes it means your gifts. Like if you can sing or like if you're into architecture, like if you're uh, a, a, a construction manager and you can build houses. Uh, we've taken it, we've extrapolated it out to mean your gifts. But when this thing is talking about talents, it's not talking about a skill like tap dancing. It's talking about money. So right off the bat, that whole thing that, that enemies of the Bible say that Jesus Christ is not about money and the Bible isn't about money and the Lord was poor, this parable blows all that foolishness right out to water. That, <laughs> that's why you hear me say all the time, you have to actually read what the scripture says. And you have to study what the scripture is actually saying. So the Lord said his kingdom is like he goes on long journeys and he calls us and he delivers unto us his goods. That's talking about goods, resources, money. <laughs> okay. So you need to right away crucify that idea that your relationship with God doesn't have anything to do with how you handle your money, your resources, your property. Yes, it does. He said his kingdom is like that. So when the Lord goes on his journey, it's when the Lord is doing whatever he's doing. Because, you know, sometimes it looks like, you know, God is silent or whatever God is doing. We're not always privy to it. But in the meantime, what he's saying, what we're supposed to be doing is taking the resources he put into our hands and multiplying them. It's talking about money. He gave unto one five talents to another two and to another one. Talents of money, gold and silver. To every man according to his several ability. Stop. There's no such thing as equality or fairness. <laughs> Lord have mercy. If I could shoot, if I could shout that one from the rooftops, I would. When people say stupid stuff, they ain't your fair because there's no such thing as fairness. We just want equality. There's no such thing as equality. Those are human concepts. There's no equal and there's no fair in life. That's why you cannot actually get it out of life because God never built that into life. What God built into life was justness. What's built into life is justice and justness, but not equality and fairness like people mean them. What do you mean by that, Prophet Taylor? I mean, everything has to function like you see in this scripture according to what it's given. The ant doesn't get to be the aardvark. The bullfrog doesn't get to be the butterfly. Why God didn't you make me pretty? Why God didn't you give me a chrysalis? So as a bullfrog, I can go into a chrysalis and I come out this beautiful winged thing because the bullfrog don't get to be the butterfly. That's why. Because the gorilla doesn't get to be the giraffe. Okay. Because the bison doesn't get to be the blue whale. Okay. Because the mountain goat doesn't get to be the manatee. Everything is what it is. And it has to function according to its design parameters from God based on what he gave it. There's no equal. There's no fair. Those are human concepts. They do not exist in life. So the Bible tells you here in Matthew 25, 15, very plainly that these different servants did not get the same amount of money to manage, but rather the Lord gave to every man according to his several ability. God gives you what you can handle. If God has given you a lot, that means you can handle a lot. If God has given you a medium size, that means medium size is what you can handle. Okay. People nowadays, especially in the West, can't stand that, but it's biblical and it's real life. So you are wasting your energy comparing yourself to another human. That is not where the mind of God is. That's why we have the scriptures. God, according to this passage, is looking at what you're doing with what he gave you. That's what he's concerned about, not comparing what you have to what other people have. Verse 16, then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. 
but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. Now, remember, this is a parable, but the Lord is describing what his kingdom is like. So that's why many times, if you walk with God more than a year, if, you, or if you've been saved more than a year, you know what this is talking about. Because sometimes it seems like the Lord answers your prayers like that. Like you pray and before you finish speaking, look like the answer's right there. And then some hot prayers. Them prayers is fire. We like that when God does that. But sometimes you have to cry out before the Lord over and over and over. Sometimes you have to do what we call labor in prayer. You have to pray over and over and over and over and over. And you have to pray faithfully and you have to pray fervently. Fervently means with intensity and with purpose. And you have to pour yourself into it. You can't give God some kind of half-baked kind of thing because God don't receive that. God listens to when you open up your heart. So some things you have, and then you have to, sometimes you have to war in prayer. And sometimes those wars are not won in a week. So sometimes it looks like the Lord takes a long time <laughs> with some of the tasks, some of the operations that God has going on. Sometimes he answers you like that, but sometimes it looks like it takes some time for God to get back to you. Not that he hasn't been hearing you all the way, but the scripture says after a long time. So we have to get the idea in our heads that sometimes when we're dealing with things from God and with God, some stuff is going to take a long time. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh, and then, I'm in verse 19, he reckons with them. Stop right there. When the Lord does show up, what is he going to do? He's going to ask you what I just told you. He's going to ask you, what did you do with what I gave you? You would be amazed at the number of people, humans, both sacred and secular, both believers and unbelievers that don't understand that principle. You'd be amazed. How do I know that we don't understand that principle? Because of envy and jealousy and because of comparison. Whatever it is that you got, you got what you got. <laughs> and whatever it is you don't have, you can't work with what you don't have. But the number of times we seem to waste precious time in our lives comparing into other people and worrying and wondering about what other people are doing is, is unbelievable. That's because you don't understand what I just uh, read to you in uh, Matthew 25, 19. That even if it takes God a long time to show up, even if the Lord, whatever operations he has going on in the invisible realm, that we're not privy to, that we can't see with the natural eye, even if it takes him a long time to show up. When he shows up, he's going to want an accounting. This is another indication that this parable is talking about money. So don't be listening to anybody that tells you that God's kingdom doesn't have anything to do with money and Jesus Christ went about money and the Lord was poor and broken. None of that is right. So verse 20. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. That's investment. That's investment. That's ROI, return on investment. I gave you five bars of silver. Now I've come back after a long time. And you said, well, Lord, now I have 10 bars of silver. I managed those silver bars and I gained five more with them. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. And to thou and to the joy of thy Lord. I'm going to come back to that. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. That's investment. ROI, return on investment. I gave you two bars, uh, two talents of gold. What do you have now? And the servant said, well, Lord, I have four talents of gold. I have doubled. My money, I have doubled your investment. And the Lord says in verse 23, uh, verbatim, he says word for word, the same thing he said in verse 21. 
So Matthew 25, 21 and Matthew 25, 23 are identical. His Lord said unto him, well done, good. Oh, okay. In verse 21, the word there is thou. So that's the difference. In verse 23, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So the same thing except for the word thou. Okay. So the Lord said, well done on getting that return on investment. And the Lord said, that was good. You're good. You're a good servant and you're faithful. Then he said, thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Stop. What did God just tell you? God just told you that he's not going to start you out with a lot of responsibility. He's going to start you out with uh, a smaller level of responsibility to see if you can handle that. Because if you can't handle a small amount of responsibility, why would God give you a large amount of responsibility? Because when you get larger amounts of responsibility, more people are affected, more lives are affected, more time, more souls, more money is at stake. So the Lord said, he's looking to see if you can do a good thing and be faithful with whatever it is he hands you, even if it's small amounts. But then what did he say? The reward was, he said, I will make thee ruler over many things. The reward for good work is more work. <laughs> the reward for handling your stuff is more stuff. But here's the, the key. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Now, in researching that, that can mean a bunch of different things, as always, because different commentators have different things to say. And I want to read you some of that because I want to comment on the commentators. Uh, he raised and recompensed and awarded to the second servant in identical terms, awarded the same in recognition of equal devotion and fidelity, even with unequal ability, a just law of the kingdom of God. So in other words, it doesn't matter how much you have. What matters to God is if you are faithful with what you have and you will get the same reward as those that might have more than you, if you too are good and faithful and multiply what God has given you, which is amazing. Okay. Uh, pulpit commentary, both these servants have doubled their capital and the Lord commends and rewards them both in the same terms. The point is that each had done his best according to his ability. Their different talents, greater or less, have been profitably employed. And so far, the two were equal. Fidelity in a smaller sphere of labor may be of greater importance than in a larger area and seemingly insignificant duties well performed may be of incalculable spiritual advantage to oneself and to others. Differences in talents makes no distinctions in rewards if the utmost is made of them. And then he references 2 Corinthians 8 and 12, if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath and not according to that he hath not. So in other words, to simplify all of that, it's not about how much you have. It's about if you are faithful and know what to do with what you have, because once again, God will reward you, this, will reward you the same. But also, this idea that people with a lesser amount, it means that you're less important. That's incorrect. Are you trying to say that the people that handle the pennies are not as important as the people that handle the dollars? Okay. Most of our transactions day to day, like when you go to the grocery store, when you buy anything, those are nickels, dimes, pennies, dollars, tens of dollars, maybe hundreds of dollars in terms of the majority of your purchase. Are you saying purchases? Are you saying that only the people that handle tens of millions of dollars, that's only important. Don't you want the right change when you go to the grocery store? <laughs> don't you want to, when you buy something off, off of Amazon, don't you want them to charge your card what they said it was going to cost? Can you see that? So in other words, what it's saying is don't be fooled by this idea that greater amounts is equal to greater importance because that's not true. If God gives you two and God gives somebody else five, you handling your two is just as important as someone that handles the five. And that's such a, a powerful principle that I hope we don't miss it because it should forever wipe out envy and jealousy and comparison out of your life. It is not true if you're a minister and let's say you minister to two people and then there's someone that's a pastor of a mega church and they minister to 20,000 people. They're not more important than you. 
they have a larger responsibility, have a larger congregation, more people hear them at one time. But your ministry on the level of just the two people you minister to is just as important to God as uh, a mega church ministry, just as important to the Lord. And the Lord is watching to see how you handle the level of ministry he puts in your hands. If you handle it well, he says, well done, enter to the joy of the Lord. Now, the prophetic word for the day is called enter into his joy. What does that mean? And how does that apply to us now? Well, the Holy Ghost wanted me to say that there are some people out there right now that have been serving God faithfully, and God is about to bring you into a level of joy. Now, when I uh, research that in the commentaries, it could mean the festivals, it can mean celebrations, it can mean the joy of a job well done, or it can mean all that. Because remember that the Lord said he's going to increase the responsibilities that he's giving you. So in other words, the Holy Ghost is saying that for some people looking at me right now, whether you're watching me live or watching me on the replay, that God is about to lift you up and reward you and give you great joy because of your faithfulness. And that it's time for that to happen. Why is that important? Because it's when you're faithful and you finish your job, you multiply what God has given you. You develop your talents that God is going to trust you with more. But the Lord is saying there's going to be a celebration. So let me ask you this question. Whenever you accomplish a goal, do you celebrate? If you don't have, because if you know anything about the Hebrew calendar, they have much celebration built into their yearly lives. They had festival days, holy days, which is where we get holiday from. You're supposed to celebrate your accomplishments. Did you know that? Some people just go from work to work and never celebrate. Or, or never, never celebrate the accomplishment or the goal that they met. But you're supposed to celebrate those goals. And God is saying he is going to bring a level of joy into your life that you haven't had before and that it's time to enter into it. Why is it so significant that I prophesy that? Here's why. Because everything in the kingdom of God and in life works the same way in terms of expectation. Do you expect to be rewarded at the end of a term of faithful service? You're doing the natural. We call that payday. <laughs> we call that a paycheck. You've been working for two weeks. You've been doing your job. And hopefully you've been doing your job with excellence. And hopefully you've been doing your job well. Well, you expect to see some direct deposit action in there somewhere, don't you? Well, God is about to give you a direct deposit from his treasures. God is about to give you, oh, you see, I feel anointing when I say that. God is about to give you a direct deposit from his treasures, treasures of the soul, as well as treasures of the finance. God is about to graduate you to another level. God is about to open up some stuff for you, but God wants you to know that it's time to celebrate the faithful service you've already put in. Don't miss that. Why is that so important? Because that's why some people burn out. Some people burn out because they never celebrate when they've achieved a level of service. They just move on to the next. And that's one of the quickest ways to get into burnout. It was so funny. I was watching Katie Ledecky after her Olympics experience and she said she doesn't like taking time off. So she said she might get wild with it and take two weeks off before she gets back in the water. <laughs> I thought that was so funny because Katie was like, that means that Katie is swimming year round. Katie is in that pool all the time. She said she loves being in the water. She feels comfortable in the water. And she said that, you know, a week off is the most she never does. And so she says splurging for her is two weeks off. Two weeks off from swimming is a splurge for Katie Ledecky. But again, that's why she's the best in the world. But the point I'm trying to make is that you need 
that celebration. You need that joy. And especially if the Lord is going to deposit something into you and into your bank account and into your soul's account. See, that's not for when you die, although there will be some more rewards there. That's happening right now. And see, and that's how a whole lot of people in the service of the Lord get worn out and miss because you didn't take the time to celebrate and you didn't look to the Lord. But yeah, see, I keep feeling anointed when I say that the Lord is going to deposit some stuff in your bank account, but he's going to deposit some stuff in your mind and also in the account of your soul, a new level of joy. So what you need to do is expect it. What you need to do is expect it. What you need to do is expect it. Expect that God is going to let you enter into this new level of joy. Now, one more thing I have to say, and I'll be done. I'm not going to be long today. Although I guess I say that every week, don't I? <laughs> but it's not my plan to be long today. Let me put it like that. And okay, i throw that out there. Um, and that is that uh, sometimes this is a matter of self-esteem. And uh, that's why you've heard me work so much on self-esteem and wholeness over the past couple of years, because what you need to understand is that your importance has is the same before God, and it's not based on your level. But if you don't understand that, and if you don't understand how to celebrate on your level, then God will give you something and you will just shoo it away like, well, that ain't nothing. And that's what's wrong with a lot of people, a lot of people think they haven't arrived until they get the big ticket items. Let me tell you something. If you don't learn how to manage the money you have, you won't be able to manage big ticket items like a house or a car or whatever. If you don't learn how to rejoice over $10, you're not going to know what to do with $10,000. And if you don't learn how to rejoice over $10,000, you're not going to know what to do over $100,000. And if you don't learn how to rejoice, if somebody puts six figures in your hand, $100,000, you're not going to know what to do with a million dollars. That's why this message is so important. So don't miss it. Let me give you a, an analogy and maybe you can understand it better. Maybe I can be more clear. It's like if you've been passed along through school, but you never learned your basic elements, you never learned what we used to call reading, writing, arithmetic, then they put the camera on your face. And let's say you just want something and they put the camera in your face and you can't even summon a sentence. You can't even understand a subject and a predicate. You can't even put a complete sentence together. You know why? Because you never got the basics right. You never got the building blocks. They just passed you for whatever reason, whatever reason they passed you through, but you never actually built on it. So then when you get a moment in the sun where a camera's in your face and the world is watching, you don't have anything, you know, more profound to say because you didn't get your English lessons back when you were a kid. Now, can you see how building that foundation when you were young and when you were first in school is so important? Because later on, you may have to say something and you want to be sure that you can speak well and express yourself well and articulate what you're trying to say well. Well, doing that comes from succeeding and all of the building of your wording uh, and your speechifying and your parts of English that you've been doing all along. Do you understand? Let me give you another example. It's why so many people that hit the lottery end up in worse trouble than they were before. It's not funny. The reason for that is because they didn't know how to manage the money they had before they hit the lottery. And so if you don't know how to manage the money you have, if you hit the lottery, it's going to make your life worse. Because you haven't paid your dues, you haven't learned how, how to manage money and graduate up to the next level. So that's why the Holy Ghost is trying to impress upon everybody listening to me and watching this broadcast and this replay that you need to celebrate when you have a victory, no matter what level it's on. So if God sends you some joy and God sends you 
uh, increased responsibilities and God sends you whatever as a result of your faithfulness, don't shoo it away. Don't minimize it because it's not the big thing. If you're a pastor and you've been working with a very small congregation, let's say you started off in a storefront church and let's say you had like 10 members. If God gets you to the point where he gives you a hundred members, don't say that doesn't mean anything because you're not on like Bishop Jake's level where you have thousands or you're not on Joel Osteen's level where you have thousands. Don't say that God graduating you from 10 congregants to 100 congregants doesn't mean anything. Yes, it does, because you need to celebrate handling the 10 sheep God trusted you with. And then you need to celebrate handling the 100 sheep that God has graduated you to. Do you know why that's so important? Because if you ever get to the big item, the big purchase, you're not going to know what to do with it if you didn't know what to do with all the purchases along the way. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. The same thing happens with people and their cars. If you don't learn how to take care of the first car you get, you're going to be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cars in, and you still won't know because you didn't learn on that first car. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. That's why this is so important, okay, that you receive the joy of the Lord, that you receive the graduation that God has for you, that you receive the increase in resources, no matter what it is. All right. And with that, that's I'm done. That's today's weekly live prophetic word. I got a few announcements. First thing is, I told you that every uh, broadcast in 2021, I was going to do something to try to increase my reach. So I wanted uh, I can't do that by myself, so I need uh, your help. So every uh, video, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. So what I'm going to ask you to do for this one thing is I want you to share this video because this is the kind of prophetic word that's designed to bring encouragement and exhortation and comfort so that other people that might be struggling on their level might continue to be faithful to God on their level and that might so that they might learn how to rejoice in what God gives them on their level. So I need you to share this video in as many places as you can. Okay. Now, the announcement I have for you is that I'll be taking off for summer break. I said it at the top of the broadcast, but I knew I was going to have to say it again. I'll be taking off for a summer break. And so I will be gone for three Sundays. I'll be gone August 22nd and 29th. And then I'll be gone September uh, 5th which is Labor Day weekend. Oh no, this thing, no, no, wrong buttons, which is Labor Day weekend. So I won't be back until the 12th. Yes. So I'll be going for the next three Sundays, August 22nd, August 29th, and September 5th, which is Labor Day weekend. And I'll be back on the 12th because I'm going on uh, summer break and a whole lot of stuff is happening, but I'll tell you about all that when I get back. So there's not going to be any weekly live prophetic word. Now, my last No More Genies for this month was last Thursday. So that's on YouTube and that's on my Facebook page and that's on my Instagram. So you can check that out. And so this will be the last weekly live for this month. I'll be going three Sundays, August 22nd, August 29th and September 5th. That's Labor Day weekend. So I'll be back the 12th because I'm going on summer break. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going to be happening in my life between now and then. I'll tell you about it when I get back. Okay. So I want to thank those of you that have watched me live. Thank those of you that uh, support me. If you want to support me financially, you can go to my Patreon, which is patreon.com, Shades of the Cross. And that's my music ministry. Uh, let me put that out there. For those of you that don't know that I have a music ministry, I do. It's called Shades of the Cross. And I've had my band for years. So uh, if you support me on Patreon, there's uh, all kinds of goodies you get. You get uh, you get alternate mixes, you get sheet music, you get wave lossless encoded files, which are bigger than the MP3s. You get sneak peeks, you get behind the scenes videos, you get a lot on my Patreon. So if you want to support me financially, that's the way to do it, to be a part of my Patreon. So thanks so much for those of you that do that. So, all right. Amen. And God bless. That's it. Remember that it's time to enter into the joy of the Lord and that whatever level that means for you, enjoy it, receive it, 
walk in it and understand that each level is important to help you handle the next level that's coming. OK, so I will see you again on September 12th. So have a good rest of your summer. Have a great holiday weekend. And uh, remember that it's time to enter into the joy of the Lord. God bless.